No, God, please, no, no, no! Needs to attach like a GPS to it, like a find my find my drone. You found it. That was far as fun. That was far, right? That's so that far. That's why I was like, I can't hear it. Where is it? I heard it that way. I, it started going RX loss, which means that I'm about to fall out of the sky. Hey guys, this is Super FPV here, and today's video is all about this little gadget right here, this little lifesaver. And it is a GPS. Uh, essentially, it will do two things uh, show you where your drone is uh, in relation to your start point, and it can also uh, have the function to um, bring back to your uh, original location by flipping a switch on your controller. So if you're interested, stick around. And uh, it, just before we start the video, consider subscribing if you want more content like this. And if you guys have any other video ideas, please do comment down below and I'll try to work hard to make one of the one of those ideas or a few of those ideas or all of them. So this is the BN220 dual GPS GLONASS module by Bishin. And who is this meant for? This is meant for those people who are flying relatively mid to long range. Uh, long range for sure, you definitely want one of these things or something more expensive, like a nicer one, like the BN880. Uh, but for those of us like me who fly a relatively mid to half long range-ish, um, definitely in areas like you saw in my video in the clip in the beginning where I was flying above the treetops and on top of a lake and everything kind of looked the same, even the landing areas looked the same and all the trees looked the same and the ridge line looked the same and I was just like, where am I? What the crap is going on? A little history on that video, I was uh, flying at the lake in Austin and uh, I flew kind of far over the lake and then I was trying to come back and none of us in my group of seven could hear the drone to ascertain where on earth it was. Was it to the right of us? Was it to the left of us? Uh, we had no clue. I uh, eventually just landed in the middle of a field and split into two parties and we just went out and searched for it. And again, as my friend said, you should you should put a GPS on it, like find my phone kind of thing. And uh, that's exactly what this does. Um, so uh, if you're interested, again, uh, stick around and I'll show you how to put together this onto your drone and set it all up. Um, and again, this is meant for those people who fly relatively mid to long range. Um, and it's really nice to have, uh, definitely not a need to have if you're flying mid range, but definitely a must have if you're flying long range. Not necessarily if you're flying mid range, but if you're flying long range, you definitely want one of these or, or another variant of this um, uh, if you if you want. Uh, so the reason I chose the 220 over the 880 is because I don't need the additional functions of the 880 um, and the 220 will do uh, just fine uh, for my purposes. So to give you a little size perspective and a little physical dimension perspective, this is it right next to a quarter. Um, it's pretty dang small and you can probably squeeze this into an, uh, like any part of your drone, preferably on top of your drone. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So what exactly comes inside the box uh, or slash or, or bag of the, uh, the, the GPS module? Um, it comes with two cables, one with uh, connectors, like four separate connectors, and then one with an actual like solid connector with all the four wires connected into one, one, uh, one pole. Um, and it also comes with a 3M sticky um, double-sided adhesive pad uh, so you can put it on top of your drone or wherever you want on your drone. That's all you really need in the bag, but I would have liked some sort of a manual uh, to know which wires do which. Uh, but I will explain that to you guys uh, when we start putting it onto my drone. So how much does this GPS module go for? This is the BN220, so the mid-range one uh, of the ones that the BSG makes. On Amazon currently, it is $14.89. Uh, as of the time I'm making this video, I have it open up on my phone right now, uh, and it's $14.89. Um, it can go up. I've seen it go up to like 16 bucks uh, on Banggood. I think you can get these for like 10 to $12 if you want to wait the time to get it shipped to the United States or wherever you're living. And then the BN880, I believe, is like 17 to 18 bucks if you want the additional functionalities that come with that. And I would recommend that for like a long, long range uh, drone setup. So let's hop on over to the workbench and actually put this together. And let me uh, introduce you to what each of the wires do and where you should put it on your uh, your drone and which pads you should put it on and everything. Alrighty, now that I'm on my workbench, the audio might not sound as clear um, because the mic is a little distant from me, but I'm gonna try my best to talk as loud as I can. So the mic can pick up everything and you guys can get all the information that you need. So um, 
here we are with my five inch drone. You guys have seen this before. And let's talk about placement of the GPS, all right? So the GPS, people like to put it all over the quad um, and where I'm gonna be putting it is right here, but with the uh, GPS actually facing up. So on top of my uh, actual quad. The bat my batteries are usually about this big. So uh, I'm gonna try to run a wire through that little hole around there and then mount it over here. But I've seen people do uh, putting it on top of their GoPro mount. Uh, and I've seen people making 3D printed uh, pieces so that they can mount the GPS to the back. And I've also seen people putting it on their arms. Um, I think the arms should be the last option because um, if the propeller decides to just bend a little bit in a crash and you pick it up or like you, uh, you turtle mode your, uh, your, your quad and then um, fly back it could damage the GPS or cut the wiring and cause a short circuit. So I would recommend not doing that. Uh, in my situation, I think it's best that I put it here because everything's really crammed inside the uh, quad and you don't, you do not want it to, the antenna to be, um, the antenna of the GPS to be uh, uh, interfered uh, by the carbon of the quad. So you don't really want to cram it inside because that'll, uh, that'll interfere with the signal coming from the satellites to the sensor right here. Uh, so uh, for my situation, again, I'm gonna put it right there, try to run the wires through the, the top plate and uh, hook it on into there. Uh, but again, you could uh, be fancy and 3D mount something uh, or 3D print something over here uh, or under here. Uh, as long as then the satellites have like a no obstruction signal that can be uh, reached to the to the front of it. Yeah, you know, people have done over on top of uh, on top of their GoPro mounts. People have had like loose wires, so then they could put the battery on and then put the GPS on top, which I would not suggest because in case of uh, like the battery ripping out, you are in for a bad time. Uh, so that's that. Uh, so again, I'm gonna put be putting it right here. Uh, I'm gonna take off the entire uh, uh, all my uh, screws, and then I'll be back uh, with the zoomed in perspective so we can see what exactly we're doing on the flight controller. So we have everything all opened up uh, and ready to go. First off, I wanna apologize for the focus. I actually have it on manual focus, and I believe it's in focus, but uh, cause the, the autofocus kept uh, screwing up on me, and uh, the table's kinda wobbly, so everything's kinda, kinda weird. Um, so I do wanna apologize for, for any, like, quality issues. Uh, so uh, we have, let's talk about the wires real quick. We have a red wire, uh, we have a green wire, and then we have a white wire and a black wire. Let's talk about the red wire. The red wire is your five volt power. So you wanna wire this to a five volt pad on your flight controller. You have the white wire, which is your TX pad. And in, uh, in, you know it's not gonna go to a TX pad, it's gonna go to a RX pad. So the TX wire, which is a white wire goes to an RX pad. So then you have your black wire, which is the ground. So it goes to a ground pad. And then you have your green wire, which is the RX wire, and it goes to the TX pad. So let's talk about that again. We have the red wire, which goes to the five volt white wire that goes to the RX pad because it is the TX wire. The black wire goes to ground and the green wire goes to a TX pad because it's the RX wire. Uh, this wire is really long, so I'm probably gonna shorten it out uh, for ease of um, application and so I won't have any extra wire sticking out or anything. Um, so yeah, uh, let's talk about which pads I'm gonna use and then we can get on to soldering. So this right here is a diagram of my flight controller as it is right now, as you can see all the all the uh, ESC related stuff is right here and that's over there. So we know we're in the proper orientation. I have uh, an open UART uh, for TX5, RX5, and I also have an open UART over here for TX2 and RX2. So I'm gonna be using these TX2 and RX2 pads over here. Uh, and I am currently using the five volt, as you can see, uh, for something else. So I'm gonna use the five volt from down here and the ground from down here just so these two are close together. Rule of thumb, you always want an open UART when you when you do this. You don't wanna use a UART that's already full. My, uh, my full UARTs are uh, the Bluetooth UART because I do have uh, Bluetooth on the F722S uh, uh, flight controller. Um, UART ones for S-Bus, uh, I have UART uh, 3, 
taken up and UART 5 is available and UART 6 is for ESC telemetry. Uh, I'm going to be using UART 3, or sorry, I'm going to be using UART 2 since that is the one that's uh, open for me and I have nothing uh, on there. So these, this TX2 pad is right here, RX2 pad over here, and I'm going to be using the ground pad, which is right here, and the 5 volt pad, which is right here. Um, again, I apologize if things are out of focus. Uh, hopefully it will. I can probably put it back in focus uh, once we actually start soldering. So again, just to reiterate the wire diagram, I'm sorry if I'm repeating this too often, but it is very important that you wire it the right way, the correct way. So again, this TX2 pad I'm using over here is going to be going to the green wire because the green wire is uh, an RX wire. So the RX goes to the TX pad. Um, and then the next pad over here is the RX2 wire for UART2. Um, that I'm going to be putting the white wire there because the RX pad uh, has the TX wire, which is the white wire. Uh, and then or the red wire goes to 5 volt and the black wire goes to ground, just like for pretty much everything uh, you've ever soldered onto a flight controller. The red is always 5 volt. Well, not always, but usually it is. And in this case, it is. Um, the red is 5 volt and the black is ground. So I'm going to cut everything up and uh, get to soldering. Um, and I'll do a quick montage of that. And I'll see you after it's done. I have soldered everything into place again I soldered the green wire to the TX pad white wire to the RX pad uh, black wire to the ground and red to the 5 volt so uh, I am done essentially uh, with the actual hardware related stuff now let's hop on into beta flight and uh, show you how to set everything up so we are in beta flight now ready to do everything that we have to do on here my quad is connected on com 5 and we are ready to go uh, quick disclaimer uh, I did go through uh, about half of it uh, and I tried recording it before um, and I forgot to record the audio so I'm doing this all over again. That's why if you see certain tabs already uh, clicked on, uh, it's because of that. So uh, let's go on into COM5 connect and we have our quad here all connected and ready. Um, the GPS logo is not showing up because I don't have a battery connected. If you don't connect your battery, it won't show up. Uh, so let's go on to ports because this is the first thing you have to do. Um, I have mine connected to UART2. As you saw, I connected it to TX2 and RX2. That is correct, correct? Uh, so we go down here to sensor input. We go from disabled to GPS, and then we change it from auto to 57,600 because that's the one that dislikes. So what we do after that is click save and reboot, and you'll hear it go. There it is, and now we go back in, click connect. Now let's go on to the configuration tab. This is the next tab that we have to go to. You see my craft name is Super FPV. Um, we go down here and we click the GPS toggle on. All right, I had it on before, so I just toggled it back on because I wanted to show you it getting toggled. So uh, GPS toggle is on and we change it from NMEAA, which is most likely where it's gonna be on for you guys on Betaflight 4.2.3. Um, you change it to U blocks and auto, fig con uh, auto config turned on if you have it turned off and then ground assistance type to auto detect. I remember when I did it, uh, it was from, it was at none uh, and then I had to change it to auto detect. So and then we go there, uh, do all that and then click save and reboot. So this next part, uh, you're going to have to plug in your battery uh, to your quad and you want to turn on your controller. Uh, once you have your controller turned on uh, and your battery connected, um, you also want to uh, set up a switch for the the uh, GPS rescue function on uh, on your uh, on your Tyrannus or whatever. Um, uh, whatever radio you have. Uh, you want to set up the switch inside the radio first. Um, I can make a separate video on that later on uh, when we talk about setting a beta flight for the introduction to FPV series that I have going on. But for uh, if you do not know how to do that, I'll link a video um, uh, in the description uh, for you guys to see uh, how to do that. And then once once you're done, once you're done with that, come back over here and continue. So for those of you guys um, already done with that step, uh, let's go into this step. So you go on your GPS rescue, click add range and at uh, 
uh, usually you have to set it to auto um, for the flight controller to detect which specific uh, switch that you're you're toggling on and off. So for mine was mine was auxiliary six uh, on my Tyrannus QX7, um, and I want this is the on position. So that means it's it'll be toggled, um, and then you toggle on and off to get the uh, precise uh, location. Um, so once you have your switch uh, set up for GPS rescue, um, you want to click save and then move on to the next step. The next step is going into your failsafe. If you do not have this failsafe option, you wanna click enable expert mode and then go on from there. Uh, for, uh, you wanna do stage one and then just click GPS rescue. These are the values that I use um, because I, it just seems appropriate. Uh, before I had it at land, which would uh, mean once fail safe is activated, uh, it would just straight up drop out of the sky, but at not drop like this, but it would level out and then land or like drop uh, out of the sky in like a more uh, gentle yet pretty quick uh, motion. Uh, now that we have a GPS, we can activate GPS rescue um, automatically through fail safe. Um, uh, it'll it'll uh, start to fly back towards us so we can regain signal um, whenever the signal is lost and failsafe activates so that's pretty nice to have uh, you don't have to do this but I would recommend you do if since now you have a GPS uh, so click save and reboot after that and then connect back in to our next step which is setting up your OSD and this is how my OSD looks I know there's a lot of information but these are all pertinent uh, to um, getting your information from your GPS onto your screen. Um, so uh, all the necessary GPS related information is down here. You have your GPS latitude and longitude, which is the uh, the coordinates as to where your, your quad is at the time. Your GPS stats shows the amount of satellites um, fixated onto your uh, GPS, your specific GPS, whether it be zero or like 20. Uh, so the, the higher the number, the stronger the signal and the stronger the, the connection. GPS speed, uh, this is the speed that your quad is flying at. It's kind of cool to see. Uh, I would probably not keep this on at all times unless you have a quad that can go over 100 miles per hour at that, uh, and you need to monitor the speed that you're going at because over 100 miles per hour is illegal in the United States for your quad to be going. I think without a ham license uh, or whatever licenses that you need or part 107 or whatever it's called. Um, so that's the GPS speed and then home direction is very important because this is the main reason you bought a, uh, a GPS to put on your quad. It's so you know which direction is home. This little arrow you see right here, that's the home direction. It'll start moving towards your, your home. Uh, and then home distance is how far you are from home. All of this information is relative, except for the GPS latitude and longitude. That's not, that's actually like positional accuracy to where, where you are. But all of this, everything else is relative to the moment you activate or arm your quad. You gotta remember that. So every time you arm your quad, your home direction changes or, or your, your home location changes. So if you pick it up, move it like 10 feet to your right, that's your new home direction. And then arm it, that's your new home direction. Uh, and the distance changes depending on that. So uh, I had this right here is the GPS uh, speed. As you can see, it's highlighting for me GPS speed. This is the uh, home direction. Uh, this is the home distance as you can see is 432 meters away from home apparently and my name is Joe pilot It's not it's actually supposed to be super FPV uh, And this is the satellite link and this is longitude and latitude uh, This is how I have mine set up you guys can set it up whichever way you want um, And that's completely up to you and after that you're done and you click save finally I want to go through uh, the CLI tab and uh, show you uh, an introduction to a few of the commands that you might want to change uh, There are a lot of commands um, And I let me show you real quick what all the commands are by typing in uh, get GPS underscore rescue and you have all these commands that show up um, and I only really care about three of these commands and that is GPS rescue initial altitude um, GPS rescue minimum satellites and GPS rescue minimum distance to home uh, everything else I don't quite care about I am fine with default values you guys can go in and change them up if you if you would like um, simply by typing set uh, space and then whatever value it is and equals to whatever value you want as long as it's between the allowed range um, 
uh, for the three that I mentioned, GPS, rescue, initial altitude, this is the uh, altitude that it'll fly up to uh, when, in, when you activate the GPS rescue switch. So for me, it's 70 meters up in the air, uh, which, is, which is plenty high enough for my area. Uh, you guys can go all the way up to 100 if you want. Um, and then lastly, the last two would be GPS rescue minimum satellites. This is the minimum satellites that uh, they, uh, you can have before you're actually allowed to uh, click the GPS rescue switch and have everything working properly. So yeah, the default value is eight. I changed it to five because uh, eight seems like a decently uh, too much amount uh, and I want to be able to activate it whenever I want to activate it uh, versus like um, if you have like like if, since the default value was eight uh, if if I had like seven satellites I wouldn't be able to rescue my drone uh, so I want I wanted the lowest possible one it doesn't matter uh, it's up to you guys to if you want a stronger signal or a weaker signal um, when you uh, activate GPS rescue and then GPS rescue minimum distance to home. This is the minimum distance that you're allowed to fly before you uh, are allowed, or no, the minimum distance that you're you need to fly before you're allowed to um, flip the switch and actually activate GPS rescue. Uh, for me, I put it at the bare minimum, which is 50, just in case I'm flying in a very uh, difficult area. Uh, and even if I go 50 meters away from home, I have no idea where I am. Like it's all broccoli once you're up there, you know, all the trees kind of just look like broccoli at that point. So for me, I minimum distance to home, uh, I did 50. Um, and that's about it. Once you do uh, all the value changes, be sure to type in save, enter, and then it'll save and restart your quad and everything. All right, so once you're done with all those steps, the final piece of the puzzle is to just take the drone outside um, and have like a free open space. Like don't have any sort of um, like barrier between the GPS and the sky uh, and then let it sit for about five minutes with the battery plugged in and it should automatically uh, detect the satellites. It takes a while for the first time you activate your GPS uh, or like the first flight or the first area you're in, uh, it takes like about five minutes for uh, it to find all the satellites and actually uh, initiate your uh, your location and everything. So uh, I I'd say like if you let's say you're in Texas and then you fly over to Atlanta um, and you're there, uh, the GPS won't automatically like lock on or anything. It will take a little while for it. You're going to have to do that whole initiation step where you sit outside for about five minutes with the battery plugged in and uh, let it try and find um, the uh, the satellites and everything. So uh, if you don't see like if on your beta flight, it says like GPS fix false. Uh, don't be alarmed. It's probably because you haven't let it sit enough for enough time. Um, uh, so that that's probably the issue. And that's it for that. Uh, and next, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out in the field and uh, actually show you how uh, everything works uh, really quickly, and then we'll end up the video. Alrighty, in this clip, you can see uh, my entire OSD. Everything that you're see uh, you're seeing is what I saw uh, when I was flying for the first time with the GPS on. Um, as you can see, I have 11 satellites connected. Now it's 10 or 9, 8. It just keeps fluctuating uh, in the bottom right, and then I have an arrow pointing to home on the bottom left with a distance to home on the bottom left as well and the speed that I'm flying at uh, and the top uh, you can also see the longitude and latitude um, numbers uh, so I mean that's pretty much it for uh, the GPS now if I was to fly a certain distance like you know quite far away uh, and then click my GPS rescue button it would automatically level out toggle um, like GPS like you would actually toggle the GPS rescue mode and start flying towards me uh, after it reaches that altitude that I uh, that I set in the CLI tab so that's pretty much it um, thank you so much for watching remember to like comment and subscribe and remember comment down below if you have any uh, questions uh, as usual uh, pertaining to the topic at hand or anything else I'll be more than happy to answer anything um, and as well as uh, please do comment down some ideas for future videos uh, because I want to make videos that you guys want to watch uh, not videos that I'd like to uh, that I that I like to make quote unquote but I want to make videos that uh, you guys will watch even if I don't necessarily like to make them because <laughs> I'm here for you guys so um, yeah uh, comment down below like comment subscribe and have a good day